Hello and welcome to Hardcast, where we will see the specifics of how some of our favorite Valiant heroes are gonna meet their grisly demise. I'm Humphrey Erm. And I'm Christian Claus. Lifeline, give me Book of Death, The Fall of the Valiant Universe. Issue 1, Fall of Bloodshot. Bloodshot monologues to himself about how sad his life is, reminiscing the good old days when he was a pirate with Armstrong. Just when he feels at home in the deep north of Canada, or what used to be Canada, he is abducted by aliens in order to fight in the Robot Wars. But before we can enjoy it, he's already won and has become a king. Then he's sent back to Earth hundreds of years after he left to find dinosaurs. And again, before we can enjoy it, He's moving on, walking once again. I kind of feel like I'm in a Samurai Jack episode. He gets to a futuristic city, finds a boy with the same name as him, and a dog just like he had, and then just dies of old age. Talk about anticlimactic. So, But I think it's fitting for a character like that. Eh, I don't know. I think it was a little bit boring. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, again, of course, that's subjective. But it's kind of nice, I think, um, just the whole idea of, um, what do you refer to it? Oh, well, yes, you said an anti-climax. But the thing is, there's so much exciting things that we only get snippets of before. So the idea then that this is kind of the end after all of this, you know, I think that's kind of uh, nice. It's kind of like that he did get to kind of die in peace, so to speak. Yeah, but it's just one of those things where it's just, it's been done so many times that it's just kind of boring now. Mm. Like, I, I, you can kind of see this coming when he's all talking about how, you know, he's going to die in pain and panic or whatever he said. It, it was kind of obvious that he's going to die just calm and surrounded by loved ones or some shit like that. But uh, I don't know. I just felt like this whole thing was just, it, it's like it was, it's like it was teasing you all the way to the end, like, like just constantly just, you know, making you feel real good, but then just not getting to the end. You know, it's just like, just before you're right there, you're about to like, just, oh, it's just like, oh, it's the perfect part. And then it's just like, oh, okay, no. Like constantly, there's so many things here that I just want to see more of. I mean, if this is just supposed to be an ad for Bloodshot issue, whatever, then I could understand it. But it just kind of feels like they're just, I, I felt very unsatisfied after this issue. All right. Well, I don't know. I mean, me coming in on it, I mean, I understood what, what it was from the get-go, even the first time I read it, that this wasn't like a um, complete story, so to speak. It's just this kind of like vision into the future. And in that sense, as I said, it's these little snippets. I can imagine that the, each adventure here would be like its own volume at some point in the future. It's like the whole pirate thing. I'm sure that will be its own volume at some point, assuming they're following it. Yeah, they are purposefully being very vague about which year everything is, so that they you know we can't catch them so to speak. Like, hey, wait a minute! If this is taking place that year, then how come this hasn't happened yet? Or yeah. So, but either way, is like, yeah, you know, Bloodshot and Armstrong as pirates. That's that that would be a fun volume, especially in the little stuff that are just written off. The Armstrong left, and soon after, the War of the Brothers changed everything. Yeah, the War of the Brothers. That, that must be the Anipada brother. Oh, yeah. And again, it's stuff like that that I like when it's sort of said. Um, I like any kind of future sh story where they just say things because it's, you know, just common knowledge. Yeah, suddenly writers get really good at, at uh, exposition when they don't have to explain stuff. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like, this is, like, all of this was totally natural, like, just... To mention offhand the War of the Brothers, it's like it's like if you and I were talking about World War II. We don't have to explain what World War II was because everyone knows what it was. World War II? Yeah, it's like, as you know, it's when Hitler and all the rest of the world fought each other because their dicks were too small. You know, that kind of stuff. It's just like, you know, it's, it's, it's basically how it's always supposed to be written. But somehow a lot of writers can only do it properly when, you know, they're in the future and there's no consequences with it. Mm-hmm. Or no, no editor is saying is sitting there thinking like, but does the audience understand? <laughs> I guess this is the first time when the writers can just be like, they're not supposed to understand. It's fine. I suppose. 
I don't know. But what's kind of and this is regarding all of the uh, all of these issues in this volume. But what's fun is it's the writers themselves writing this. This is Jeff Lemire who's currently writing Bloodshot and all the other. Oh, okay. Books. I was like, I was like, oh, what an amazing concept! The writers are writing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but again, it's not like just one writer deciding all of this. Like it, it feels almost like uh, the current writers to the current books were basically told, okay, figure out how they die. I mean, obviously, there's more, much more discussion and thought put into it than, yes, how do they die? But they kind of get to themselves put their marks, so to speak. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because except for Bloodshot, all the other characters are basically um, the writers currently working on their respective books. It's like their creations, you could say, even, even if they're rebooted versions. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they basically got to decide... Again, assuming they follow through with this. I mean, this is so far in the future that it won't really matter. Or it could be an alternate universe thing. Uh, I hope not. <laughs> like, once they come up with an alternate universe that, like, sticks, besides just being, like, a fun concept for a thing, you know what I mean? Mm hmm then, then I think I might actually, I don't know if I'd give up on Valiant, but I'd be, this for the second time, actually pissed off. For the second time? Oh, we will get to the first time at some point. No, what was the first time? Uh, you'll see. No, don't none of this you'll see. What was the first time? <laughs> so uh, it's a uh, what's called Bloodshot Reborn Volume Three. Why? Well, it's a spoiler. <laughs> so? <laughs> what seriously? I don't know. This whole book was a spoiler. Yeah, it was not uh, mentioned here at all. No, but I, I know. But I mean, it's just like a, well, well, fine. Whatever. The whole volume is just a dream. Oh shit! And like really bad, like it's not like where you could kind of assume it is. Like everything works. Like okay, that's cool, you know. So it's a okay. little bit of a flash forward. Okay, cool new mechanics involved in terms of bloodshots, uh, like powers in this new environment. Like okay, it's cool. You know, it's okay, kind of a little Mad Maxi, you know, in terms of style. And then like no wait, <laughs> this, this never none of this happened. This was all a simulation. And then it wakes up for them. I have the. You now don't think about. It. I haven't even read past that on Bloodshot. Oh, okay. So that's that's where you. I haven't read it. any more Bloodshot since then. Wow. Not like on purpose, but I realized I haven't. I just ah, oh, just really because it's oh, because again, simulations are just as bad as dreams. Like no, they, it doesn't make it better. Well, well, thank you, Chris. I wasted this rant here now. <laughs> no, it's okay. We can get back to. That. I mean, I'll probably have forgotten it by last that's by true. next time. That's true. By the way, if if anyone hears screaming in the background of the the sound my my girlfriend's currently watching the football game so mm. there's a lot of screaming going on her favorite team is winning by a lot yay and it's on to the super bowl maybe go local sports team well it's not local it's the jaguars she has she's never lived in america but she's for the jaguars apparently because they have a nice logo that, that's how i decide to yeah so the, this is really where the graphic designers win <laughs> yeah exactly so, but yeah, it's just fun stuff here. And honestly, page 17, so with the old dinosaurs, mm -hmm. I believe that must be a very specific reference to Turok. Not just the fact that there's dinosaurs, but what's called the, his post there, I think is reminiscent of some cover. Oh, okay. The way he's like holding the knife and stuff. Wait, so is Turok in the future or in the past or in the the never again, the, never, the, never depends side? Depends on the version. Never. Depends on the version. The original oh, okay. gold key one was in the past. Like he, he and his brother um, go exploring and they like fall into this like holes in a cave somewhere where they go into like the hollow earth kind of thing. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's like in the, like, you know, the olden times. Uh, Valiant, I think it starts like that, but he was introduced in the Unity event. So he never like existed until that event where everything okay. was all a mishmash of time anyways. And then after that, he got his own series, which was which was in the present day, but fighting then cyborg uh, dinosaurs. And then the Acclaim, which is uh, then the version that became the games, I believe because of the weapons, it must be in the present day at least. But I haven't like read those. So yeah, don't know. Okay. Uh, I, I love characters with complicated uh, like publishing history. But yeah, I guess that's not really much besides, you know, specific things that they're hinting at and stuff. No, I mean, I guess it, the the way that he died basically is just the nanites stopped working. Mm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. 
So who's the who's the kid? I don't know. I mean, he says Ray. Um, is it is it you know is it Rye? I was thinking that too. Like if that could be a cool like way to kind of you know connect it. But I don't know. There's nothing. It's implied from what I remember from uh, or the volumes we've read that he was taken from birth. So it's not really like uh, like he'd grow up. Yeah, but that's only the Rye that we know. Oh, like it's an older Rye or? Well, I don't know. I mean, it looks like a lot of cities are still on Earth. Yeah. I mean, if 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 this if the city that he's on is on Earth, which I assume because he's on the ground and stuff like that. Oh, I that mean, is true. That's a good point. So it might be the first Rye or one of the first test subjects that's going to be Rye, or I don't know. Well, again, I they're vague. They're purposefully being vague about it. So, like in terms of which year it is, so we wouldn't know. Um, yeah. Though honestly, I mean, since I mentioned that before as well, um, the what's called bloodshots and Rye's connection. The fact then that his real name is Ray and stuff like that, you know, it's got to be some connection. Like, not that it's not because of his name. That's why they call him Rye. Yeah. But just in terms of, oh, hey, you know, yeah, there's, you know, little threads connecting. Even if it's coincidence in terms of in the universe, it's kind of nice that there is, like, little things, little motifs. But yeah, it's just, you know, could be basically a preview of uh, future volumes here. Though as far as I can tell from, like, the previews of uh, the current volumes... And none of these things have happened yet. And we're like, what, two years, three years behind? Now, this should be, uh, this would be uh, 20, um, yeah, this is 2015. Uh, yeah, so three years behind. Yeah. But from what I've been, what I've been able to see from what has been published, at least from the, you know, like the covers and the preview pages and stuff, uh, none of this stuff has happened yet. And again, like I said, with some stuff, they do do like flash forward sometimes, just like with uh, the Eternal Emperor. So it's not like they have to wait, you know, um, until time has passed so the, to this point that they can tell the story. Mm -hmm. but again, I think that's a cool kind of cool thing, especially as much as I would love for all these writers to stay on the books. It would be really cool um, with the new writers taking on these like years later. Yeah. And just kind of like, okay, well, here you go. Like, good luck. Let's see what you can do with this. <laughs> yeah, good luck. That's a good way of saying it. <laughs> no, but I mean, as you, you know yourself, you know, from what when we've like analyzed the movies and stories and stuff, you know, like, oh, yeah, but how could you do this better? Or like, oh, actually, how couldn't that have been cool? Like, it's a lot easier when you have something to work with, you know, starting from scratch. Like, oh, OK, come up with a story. Ugh, hard. But here, when you have very specific things here, you, you know, you have these four pages with, you know, both giving you a visual of everything as well as, you know, all the information in the captions. You know, you have a lot of stuff you can work with there and then, like, just try to make it fit into an actual story. I don't know. I mean, I'm looking forward to whatever can happen from this. And I really hope they stick to it. Issue 2. The Fall of Ninjak. Ninjak, now an old man, is meditating in the remains of his old castle after an off-screen attack from the armor hunters years before. As he does so, he's attacked by little spider robots who are apparently being controlled by Livewire. The two discuss things amongst themselves in terms of past events, such as Dr. Silk's clones attacking Japan, leading to Livewire to prepare to lift all of Japan off of Earth. Ninjak sees the flaws in the plan and vows to stop her, showing off his army of Spylocks, along with Ginger. Turns out Livewire isn't really Livewire a rather a robot version of her, so he has no qualms about blasting her with Ginger, with the both of them flying into space to destroy New Japan. They both die in the process, unaware that their efforts were meaningless. I gotta say, uh, this one felt a little too, like, sort of bat-wanking, as I've heard people call it. What? Well, it's regarding any story with Batman where he's a little bit too good. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, you know, Batman's just a man, but then, oh, but he learned how to do this, and like, ugh, really? Seriously, he's going to be able to do that now, too? It's kind of jumping the shark in that sense. Sort of. I mean, again, this is far in the future. Well, 100 years, so it's not like that, but it's just, ah, uh, that arm he has, it's not technology. Mm -hmm. And like, again, if he was a psyot, sure. Because, you know, they, yeah. they've shown that, you know, there are you know, if you're a psychic, you are a psyot. But, yeah, I don't know, just a little too much, I feel like. Oh, yes, now meditating psychic powers. Well, I mean, then again, I mean, this whole 
this whole universe has a lot of different things where people can do amazing things just by meditating. So I wouldn't necessarily, I mean, that's not the the worst thing that, that I've ever seen in a Valiant comic, you know? Oh, no, no, certainly not. I just feel in terms of ninja. Not even then. I mean, no, I mean, come on. I mean, you, you don't know. I mean, it, would you have believed it more if, like, would you have believed it, believed it more if, if we went through an entire volume where he then meditated and learned this thing? I mean, you never know. And, and again, but also you have to understand, she's, he's fighting an enemy, right? Mm. Right? So, so when you fight an enemy, you're trying to intimidate them. So honestly, it might just, actually, it might just be some technology. No, but he makes it very clear that it isn't, though. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. All he, no, he doesn't. Let's see. I know you're looking for it right now. Yeah, but he says something at some point because I was also like, dude, you're talking about like you know, fuck technology all the time, and it's like, dude, look at your arm. And then he says something. Uh, where is it? Because I remember it. He did say at some point. Yeah, I know he says something. Ah, huh? where is it? I know he does. But... Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> No, the idea there is that all he says is that um, you'd be surprised what uh, I can do if I put my mind to it. Yeah, here it is. Uh, you'd be amazed what I can do when I put my mind to it. That is all he says about that arm. He says, you look damaged. Or she says, you look damaged. The new arm, your, your design, I don't recognize the tech. Uh, there we go, yeah. It's not tech. I gave that up a long time ago. You'd be amazed what I can do when I put my mind to it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I found it, yeah. Again, all he says is what he puts his mind to, making us think, oh, it could be a psychic thing, it could be a whatever, or it could be some sort of new technology that, you know, he created as some sort of organic thing that's not technically technology, you know what I mean? And, and it's not about, I mean, he's not going to sit there and explain to this enemy of his the exact way that he built this arm because it doesn't matter. What is this, an anime? Exactly. It doesn't matter. He's just trying to um, intimidate her. That's all he's trying to do. He's basically like, no, I know something that you don't know, and I'm better than you. It's the it's like the most basic tactic in any kind of war thing or, or fighting or anything like that. You just, just make yourself seem so much more amazing than you actually are to freak the other person out. And that's the perfect thing that is injected here. And especially because these are just little little nuggets. Oh, we have to we have to suspend our disbelief a lot with these things. Because there's there's so much history that we did not see. Oh no, certainly. I mean there's, you know, definitely again, there's been a lot of ninja stuff coming out that I haven't read. Not saying that it necessarily has to have like you were saying before about having him meditate all the time. But it could very well be like little seeds being placed here and there about, you know, either some kind of technology or some technique or something. And again, in that sense, it does just like the, you know, the previous and the later issues do, with just putting you in the middle of something where you purposefully are confused because you don't know anything. Mm -hmm. And also we get, I mean, we kind of knew it already from uh, Rai, but now we get to know that it is Livewire that is controlling New Japan in that sense. Or like, you know, the reason they call it Livewire is because of her, even if it's not real her. <laughs> that stuff always gets uh, funny. It's a clone. It's a robot re replica. So it's kind of cool, and especially with things like with Spylock, too. Because mm -hmm. they mention in Rai, you know, how he's like a movie character, like he's like a franchise. Yeah. So the idea that he's trained out these people as Spylock, and uh, yeah, you know, and then this is just like the origins of that. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Though. Yeah, you know, Ninja gets to basically be in the future in a way you could say without it being like, oh, it's future Ninja. Like Spylock got to be his own character before we like find out about this, right? But is it just like a you know kind of like a, just a big tragedy at the end there? Because I'm not entirely sure what happened then. Like he attacks New Japan, he's destroyed, but New Japan's fine. Like is he just supposed to be sad, or am I missing something? Because I have done that before. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, well, I mean, they did say that it was supposed to be in space, right? Yeah, yeah. And maybe it's not in space. Maybe it's just in the atmosphere. It's still within the, not well, not in the atmosphere, but like in the, 
whatever the orbit is like like within the i don't i don't know how to fucking explain that i'm not a scientist <laughs> but like you know maybe it didn't get all the way to the point where it needed to be or where it should be so maybe it's it's not completely away from the earth's influence i don't i don't know i mean it kind of looks like maybe i i mean it does look like he destroyed the the propulsion right mm. so maybe now it's just hanging in the air there and that's how the new new japan was created is because they they got stuck in this loop around the earth um that they mm. weren't supposed to have they were supposed to go off maybe orbit the earth still but outside of the stratosphere because it seems like um in what we've seen in rai they're not in space well, like yes then yeah they're orbiting within yeah they're orbiting within the earth's atmosphere right it's a bit confusing sometimes so i'll have to double check yeah but i mean the way that i've seen it i i feel like they are orbiting within the world's atmosphere because they never talk about anything about you know not being yeah vacuum and stuff like that yeah 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 so i don't think they're in space necessarily yeah yeah i guess i guess it might, it might be just on the edge of it like right out of like right on the pole or something so it's like a satellite or I, I don't know it's weird no a satellite is outside of the uh earth's atmosphere well, it depends could have you know like low satellites no because uh it would be it would use you would need to have propulsion to stay up yeah but you know it's got science Look, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, this one wasn't quite as intense in terms of an info dump, I think. Like the Bloodshot one was. Well, I mean, this one at least didn't have too much that much monologuing. Well, yes, a little bit. So, and again, yes, I'm sure he's words and mentions of things. So we're like, ah. As well as this one, as it says, yes, 100 years, which is a very small time when you think about it compared to the previous one. Yeah. But it's also just so weird. I mean... How how did he survive a hundred years? See, it's funny. Like that, I don't have a problem with. No, but he he must be like a hundred and thirty years old. Oh yeah, no, but that I'm fine with because that I'm thinking like a meditation kind of thing. What the fuck? Did, but the, so that's you're okay with someone? That's... You're okay with someone living like forty years <laughs> more because they sit down and think, but they can't control an arm that does not have technology in it. So, well, see, that's the thing. I feel that's something more like, okay, yeah, you know, man, mind over matter. But controlling some, like, but, little things on your arm so that they can dude, 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 around you just, grab you a just, dude, 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 you just said mind over matter. Yeah, but there's a difference when it's, like, psychic powers like that rather than just, you know, like, your body controlling. Your body is also matter, dude. Yeah, but it's not the same. And so is, so is a, a fucking, and, I mean, and besides, actually, dude, dude, literally... His metal arm is matter that's connected to his body. Yeah, but I don't like it. Like, if, oh. you, think, if you look back at Ninja Volume 2, you know, during the, like, flashback stuff at the temple, it's, like, basically, like, it's his back broken and stuff, and he just lies down. I can yeah. imagine that, you know, that uh, him learning that it would be an extension of living so long, that his body can just, like, he knows how to keep his body in prime, like, shape. And you don't think if he sticks a metal rod into no, his arm weird. socket? It feels too weird. I'm sorry. I, I don't. I don't give the what's called the ninja a pass on that one. You're you're a disabledist then, aren't you? <laughs> oh no, I'm happy for him. I just don't like the story. So you're a disabledist. <laughs> you hate disabled people. Well, it's just ableist, but yeah. All right, whatever. I like disabledist better though, but yeah. Either way, on to the next one. Issue three. Fall of Harbinger. Old Peter is on his way to die with all of his old friends. Then we see in the past, but our future. Peter is the president of the Harbinger Foundation and that the bleeding monk has bled to death. Arata is coming back to Earth, apparently, after leaving because his mind can't contain his brilliance anymore or something and he doesn't know what will happen when it breaks. But now he's coming back, and Peter and all other Scythes can feel a buzzing. Then, normal people. Then, everyone. The world is going more and more to shit the closer Harada is getting. We flash back to the quote-unquote present, and see that the renegades were just a figment of P Peter's imagination. 
but he knows, so I guess it's cool. Harada's mind breaks in, and Peter relives everyone's death, which we get to see, which is nice. Then we finally see what Harada has become, and after wading through the metaphors and other cryptic monologuing and scientific mumbo-jumbo, I'm still not quite sure what's going on. Something's attacking him, or maybe it's his own mind. Whatever. Either way, I think Peter and Harada both go onto some other plane of existence where they live as buddies. How nice, especially in the wake of the destruction that they left. To tie everything up, Peter's wife is now trying to rectify everything, I guess, but she meets a newborn child that is bleeding constantly. The reincarnation of the bleeding monk. Whatever that means. All right. Isn't it nice to know how Peter finally dies? Uh, <laughs> if you ask me, he, he died way too old. Mm. Wouldn't, it, wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be hilarious to just have like one of these stories exist in the now? I was like, it kind of like it's, it, it foreshadows like the next the volume of another series or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like literally the next time we open like Harbinger volume, I don't know, 150, it feels like. Mm. Um, we open it up to the next volume and then it's just like, oh shit, this is happening now. Peter's going to die in this issue. That's awesome. <laughs> That honestly would have been a really cool thing, uh, because it, it like spoiling you in this, but by treating it like oh yeah it happened long ago. Well, I guess I mean some of the because when they go through all the um, yeah this is one the, of the closer things we've got in here with like the renegades. Yeah, with all, how showing how the renegades died. I mean they died in very young age, kind of. I mean especially the uh, Tork, Tork mm. guy. He died. What's yeah, the thing he died cool. from? Spina bifida. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Google Spina Bifida. Spina Bifida is a type of birth defect called a neural tube defect. It occurs when the bones of the spine don't form properly around part of the baby's spinal cord. Spina Bifida can be mild or severe. The mild form is the most common. So basically it's that stuff that... Uh... Mm. Well, yeah, that's <clears throat> exactly... So and then we got the uh, Faith Herbert, Sefer. So, yeah, how did she die? Just died. Yeah, you know, just yes, heart failure. <sighs> Archer. <laughs> totally, you know. Does Archer have a uh, goatee? I think so, and he looks like he's gained some weight, too. Yeah. Unless it's just the clothes that are unflattering. And does he only have one leg, or does that look weird? Is it just a weird oh, cut there? No, I mean, as, as cool as he is, I think he would have, like, some kind of crutches or something if he did. Yeah, but doesn't it look like he just has one leg? It's just a silhouette thing with the clothes. Like, Are you sure? I think so. He's just, like, mid-walk. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I see it now, I see it now. Yeah, you kind of want to put a gray line there to outline the Yeah, you get a little leg. bit on uh, Chris there. She got some like lines there on her dress to kind of yeah 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 you kind of want that on the leg too because it looks like he has only or one you leg. just pose him differently so it's a little yeah better. so it's more obvious uh, but either way yeah so she died but again little things like this too you know like because again we got a hint of this from uh, you know the last Exo War volume during the wedding with Faith you know dancing with Archer yeah so that would be like the the first like uh, spark of romance between them. That's kind of like a cute little thing then like we again you know i kind of like this in terms of spoiling the future yeah because it's more like because rather than just teasing about things it's a bit more now yes these are the things you know we're not being vague about things this is how it happens is the writer of of harbinger the same writer as in archer and armstrong i uh, know that kind of sucks because basically, the arch, the, the writer of Harbinger is like, no, 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 this is my ship, <laughs> Faith X Archer, and I'm going to now put it into my comics, so now you have to do it. So, well, maybe he... Oh, would, wouldn't it be awesome if they had like a little writer's feud, and then um, the writer for Archer and Armstrong just made Archer like a really, like a cheating bastard, like just like... <laughs> Like, like he has his own some like like OC ship or whatever it's called. Like, mm. what was that? What's that ship called? The OTP. Yeah. OTP. That's the one. Like some sort of OTP that that he wants to push. Like I don't know, 
Archer gets together with his sister or whatever. Well, they're not by Cont- the Contacts but... people. It's, she's adopted. It's okay. I do like the idea that Faith's casket is floating, but it kind of um, doesn't well, make the pallbearers kind of necessary. Well, you know, it's tradition. I mean, oh, God. Do you think many people were just like, oh, man, that... That cask is gonna be so heavy. Oh, <laughs> and then and then it just floats, and they're like, "Oh, thank God." So, but yeah, no, so, it's, uh, so that's the main thing we kind of get there, because then everything else is very far in the future. Yeah, that, when did this? Wait, this came out two thousand fifteen, so that was pre-Trump, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this whole thing where it said like her funeral is the most attended in recorded history, that was that felt so Trumpy to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like like to mention that. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It just, it just felt. It felt like very like, she's so popular, and I have to, you know, tell everyone that it's the most recorded history, most <laughs> attendance in recorded history. She was the most popular, most best superhero ever. Well, I mean, again, we'll we'll it'll be interesting once we get to her like um like ongoing series. Mm. So, because there, because I definitely think we'll have a lot to discuss there in terms of um, the current like trends in superhero comics and stuff like that. Yeah. Because, but honestly, as the way they describe it here, after a long su- and successful career as the world's most popular superhero, okay, you know, it's not impossible. But um, I'd really like to, uh, I'd like for them to prove it, so to speak. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, not yet, because that's the thing. It's, you kind of get that whole thing when you come up with a character. And it's like, it's like, have you seen, that, have you heard of that comic called America from Marvel? No. With the like, uh, this like lesbian Latina from another dimension, because uh, that's a big criticism that book has had amongst many. But the big thing is like, regardless of you know your politics and opinions on stuff, like when the whole first page of the comic is just nine panels of different Marvel characters saying how awesome she is, like we haven't seen her yet. This is like they're your first. In- I mean, she she's existed before, but it's kind of like a little not a reboot, but kind of like okay, you know, she's getting a new series now. Yeah. When you have the first page just being people going around like, oh, yeah, she's so awesome. You know, like, she's our future. and yes, Show, like, don't tell. Exactly. And again, and right afterwards, you know, we, we get to see her in a fight with some energy being. Yeah, but still, I mean, you don't, you don't, again, like you were saying, like, we see her in a fight with some energy beam. Yeah, then make that an extraordinary fight. Make it that there's zero casualties. Make it that that energy beam was, like, trying to kill anyone it saw. And still, the superhero was able to to manage, you know, like oh yeah, it's not really not because it. I think it lasts exactly. like ages, and yeah, um, yeah. and it's about her breaking up with her girlfriend because she doesn't want to move with her to her new university. Oh my god! So, all right, I'm all I'm all for inclusion and stuff like that, but I just feel like that was just. <laughs> well, yeah, <sighs> you know, this is Valiant, not Marvel. I know, but Valiant again, is so Faith, much better. But the character Faith has gotten a lot of these criticisms as well. And honestly, from the first volume, which I have read, I'm not sure I agree. We'll, we'll see once we get to it again. Maybe after rereading it, I'll uh, notice some flaws in the story. Well, the Faith Volume 1 is in exactly 10 episodes. Oh, yeah. So in 10 episodes, guys, you know, we'll see what we think. Which will be a long time because we have to take that hiatus. <laughs> Because of my move. Spoil- oh, oh man! Is that the spoil? Is this the fall of the fall of Hardcast? <laughs> <laughs> the fall of Hardcast is me moving to a new apartment. Well, you know, just a little story there. You know that we are gonna have a break in between, <laughs> a little hiatus, as you said. <laughs> yeah. I will discuss that afterwards. Afterward. Huh? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, um, and again, the other big thing I noticed that didn't feel too like weird, though I do know some of this stuff is um, based on like uh, the original Valiant. Hmm. So, because apparently, in between the present day and the whole four thousand one AD, you do have this future in Valiant that's like this one, where there's a lot of psyops everywhere. Yeah. But then there's no explanation really. Um, there's no explanation really about how suddenly they all kind of disappear in time for four thousand one AD. So that could be something interesting to see, as well as the fact that we can find out here that Sunlight on Snow, or you know, Mech Major, mm-hmm. that he must in some way. Get uh, you know, get loose from Harada at some point, and it creates its own society. Oh, is that how what that is? Okay. Hmm? Yeah, I wasn't quite hundred percent sure what that was that he had. 
I mean, every everything is still a Harbinger Foundation, it feels like, and mm. and he it seemed like he was just some sort of servant, but in a more sentient state. I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean, he has his own like society, as I understood it. I thought for a second that Faith was Peter's wife. Mm. That's because of that uh, wife we get to see. Yeah, was that it? Because like, um, when he goes at the beginning there. Or not beginning, but he says, um, it's okay, Faith, Yish. If I'm not back mm. in an hour, contact the op- opposition council. And then it says, be careful, darling. And I was like, well, she looks kind of... Yeah, no, she's just old. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but, but but I mean, obviously, I don't know the difference between... I mean, obviously, then... then f- cause, so basically, what, he called his daughter Faith? Yeah, I think so. I think they named his daughter after Faith then, uh, you know, like in respect to her or something. Yeah, but that's so confusing. Yeah, well, again, it's um... because, because especially right now, I mean, I don't. Did they? Did no? He never spoke to Yish or Faith before this. So in that panel where we see an old, somewhat bigger woman and a young girl with with pink hair, he he says one person says dad, the other one says darling. And he just says Faith and Yish, and he doesn't like look at either of them, so we don't know who is who. Mm. It's just so confusing, because I was like, wait, what? He, he, he's married to Faith, and their daughter is Yish? Mm. But yeah, I mean, obviously then at the, near the end of the comic, when they then explained that uh, you know, she died next to her husband, yeah. Archer, it's just these confusing things where I feel like it's so... I don't know. I mean, sometimes I actually think it would be a really interesting job to be an editor, like I would love to kind of do that kind of job. So you just kind of like catch all these kinds of mistakes and yes, make yeah, sure it's a better yeah, product because, overall. Because, yeah, because I feel like a lot of these things where you just need to take a, um, a step back and read it as a as an un uh, what is it like a, just a how do you call it just well it's a third party. from from an outside an outside perspective yeah a third party where you just kind of look at it and be like wait this doesn't make sense you know maybe i mean can we get through with this or whatever but um yeah like rewrite you know. this because to make it clear that we know because again you know this is our only instance of this happening right right but i gotta ask though what was the point of that panel right after there the be careful darling and i don't know the way he looks back there i don't know i just kind of get the like oh, i told you time and time again don't call me darling yeah (laughs) i don't know i don't think that was necessary at all or if it was i don't think the drawing like the the facial expression really came across right yeah i think maybe maybe it could be a little bit of a a worried kind of i might not see you again kind of look you know like a a person about to go somewhere where yeah he might die i mean again Mm. he's going into this little little sphere with with his biggest enemy i mean yeah yeah again it's not like you know biggest deal but when i saw it i was like <laughs> yeah the facial expression like it was it's, it literally is a bitch you say what <laughs> like, bitch what you say careful again say so say be careful again yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh boy but yeah yeah and then the only thing too uh besides of course the bleeding monk as you mentioned in the summary yeah Mm-hmm. I like the idea of the, those parasites that they consume uh, psychic energy. I don't know. It's like, yeah, it sounds like the. Typical... Oh, that's what that is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because you see them, um, like it sort of has this sort of like parasite look. They have some sort of insecty, and you see that there's a lot of them during that uh, page spread. Like you know, they just have they have this kind of like vagueish, you know, like insectoid form. Mm-hmm. I like that idea because it also makes a. Well, it makes kind of like an interesting enemy for Psyops. Like, you know, the idea that, you know, their greatest strength is basically what attracts this terrible enemy. I don't know. That'd be cool to see if... Um, I'm guessing it can't happen until this point, unless we have, mm-hmm. like, some, you know, space adventure. But I'd love to see something more with that, where that's the kind of creature they fight. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that that's what that was. I wasn't really... I mean, they started talking about it, and my eyes just kind of glazed <laughs> over. And I was just it, like, oh, it, it was the longest one to read. I realized, like, it's yeah. just as long as the others. But I realized myself, oh, wow, you know, like, w- 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 am I close to being done? Oh, holy shit, halfway through? Yeah, well, it's just because it's, it's so dense. That's just with all the, I mean, the, that's the thing. You always have this problem with 
when it goes into this whole psychology and the psyop powers, especially, it's just so dense with all this pseudo intellectual kind of. I mean, again, maybe not pseudo intellectual, but it's just it just feels so weird because it's all fiction. Mm. And I don't know if it's if it's just me who just can't get into it like this, but I mean, I'm I'm all for you know talking about the the human mind and kind of figuring out how all that shit works in the universe and all that kind of stuff but just uh, it just feels so weird when it when you're when you're trying to figure it out on a on a on a, on a fictional basis like why go through all this effort to kind of just like I mean, I glazed over a, just like all of this stuff and I'm not going to like apologize for it because, um, but what I mean is just like when, when this whole thing happened and that, especially that, that two page spread where it was just all about, you know, chakras and stuff like that, where it was just like, yeah, okay, put this in your thing if you want to put it, but I'm just going to go, just go <laughs> over it because I do not, I do not need to know why this fictional character Toyo Harada is who he is right now because I just need to get to the point where they f- kill each other. That's fine. I don't care. And again, I'm all for it in real life, but this kind of stuff, it just, I can't, I can't suspend my disbelief enough where I'm just looking at this going like, this is ridiculous. And then everyone died. <laughs> Issue four, the fall of Exo Nano. We see Commander Trill attaining one of those anti exo manowar spears in preparation to kill the False One. We then follow a dad and his son visiting a museum for exo manowar in Italy where he first reappeared, unaware of Trill and his henchmen entering the place in disguise. We then look back to the last moments of Arik, now almost entirely covered in the exosuit, giving his goodbye to both Shanhara and his wife. He then says goodbye to his daughter, Yuka, who after who, after Arik dies moments later, takes on the suit that now peels off of him in death, becoming the new Exo Man of War. Back in the present, Trill digs out Exo's coffin only to find it empty, with Yuka confronting him. He kills a few of his henchmen, and after some choice words, Trill relents and gives up, joining her as a hero to protect the Earth. This one in particular must be like not too far in the future in comparison. Oh yeah, in comparison maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean far enough, but I think this like, you know, with before this, there was Ninjak that was the soonest with like a hundred years. Mm. So this one must be within sort of like um maybe a bit above average lifetime or so. Well, not even above average. I think it might be even sooner than we think because like she looks like what 18 maybe 20 yeah, probably yeah probably around there yeah so i'm thinking this is like yeah 20 years from now or maybe 23 22 years from now maybe but his wife looks pretty old too uh, yeah but that's what i mean i mean they're already like what 30 40 and i'm just thinking like yeah no but just assume the 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 toll that that exo suit must the the, the um shahira suit or shahan or whatever Shanhar. it's called, shanhara suit must take on eric you know what i mean like like i feel like his aging i mean yeah obviously as you said the the um his wife also looks pretty old but i'm thinking they're in their 60s maybe Probably. so i'm thinking this is like yeah again i'm thinking this is like 20 to 25 years from now from quote unquote now mm. man i wish we were a video podcast so i could keep doing my <laughs> quote unquotes because i do them a lot so yeah but either way you know because of that it kind of feels a little bit more um, not cozy but just a little bit more low-key mm. i mean i like the idea of um, him having existed long enough for there to, for there to be a museum yeah i mean that's, that's nice it's just like the flash museum and dc comics and stuff mm-hmm. yeah because there would be. I mean, there must be, you know, museums for superheroes, you'd think. You know, with their cultural press, cultural and, like, you know, societal presence. Yeah. And again, it's kind of, we know then that the uh, Trill, you know, here that he's, okay, so he's still alive after what we've been seeing from Exo Man of War. And he's on his, on Eric's side. Well, yeah, but, you know, it's like, confu- well, it's kind of interesting to see what would happen then, where he then feels so, like, he feels so offended at... Uh, Oryx like buried there with the suit. 
uh, you know, to his knowledge. So again, it's one of those things where it's very interesting to find out then, like, what happens. And honestly, that I think uh, will actually happen relatively soon. There's only so many volumes left in Exo Manowar, like the first run of it. And I also like the whole little um, seed that they're planting there with uh, Shanhara leaving Earth. Because mm -hmm. that... You know, I mean, again, this is, you know, still into the future, you know, Ark still alive in the comics. But that would be an interesting thing then to see, like, okay, you know, some alien then getting a hold of it. Or, you know, maybe bringing, coming back as a villain or something because it came on to graft it onto someone else. Yes, cool things like that. He was like, ah, oh, yeah, we can get some cool things coming out of this. Though I have to bring back that thing that I mentioned last time in Book of Death regarding um, Ark using Shanhara to heal his uh, shoulder wound. Mm hmm yeah all right yeah 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 Yeah, but you see what i mean there like because here he is totally covered so it's not like because again that's the impression i got that it's more about you could choose to so maybe if you don't care yeah but dude dude that's the thing we we actually talked about this we we mentioned that um it might be just a skin that he he puts the skin above him like above the the inside right of his... right yeah 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 but we, maybe we, at we, this point. we came to that yeah but we came to that at conclusion i mean we were saying that uh that he um that is like a, a nice thing that he's doing because when he opened up his arm or whatever at that one issue uh you could see the the exo suit or that shanhara suit underneath underneath his his skin exactly so maybe at this point he's just been like he's his body's so damaged that this is how it has to do it yeah it can't do it any other way which which makes sense, you know. I'd imagine he didn't must have had some huge battle, not necessarily recently, but before this thing. Oh, yeah. Like, totally, like, maybe dismembered and immolated and stuff like that. So, you know, at this point, that's all he can, like, kind of have. Yeah. But I gotta say, and again, I mean, this kind of discussion's always been had whenever, you know, a uh, well-established hero is then, like, uh, passes on his legacy. Mm -hmm. But part of me wonders, because that's also a discussion that's been had in the last few years, especially with Marvel, with a lot of their characters, like, uh, giving their mantles over to newer characters. Yeah. And I'm, I, part of me can't help but think that Commander Trill is representing uh, what's called people criticizing that. <laughs> no, I mean, it's like, you know, she appears there uh, at the end. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, he says, what have you done with him, false one? So your words are heresy, filth, filth from a pretender. You do not wear the true armor. I don't know. I mean, the, I, don't, I don't mind the critiques people have and stuff, but I can't help but see that, that that's kind of what they're referencing. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess. Well, not not maybe. like a not like a ham fisted kind of way, you know. You know, not like haha, look at those guys. Like it makes sense in universe. Yeah, it's kind of nice of value to like already for us. Uh, what's called diehard fans to kind of like already like tell us it's gonna happen. So you know, just make peace till then. <laughs> but it's kind of interesting though. It would then imply that you know, do you think that's just a special thing with the Shanhara one? That the remains of it can then peel off. What do you mean? Well, again, you know, because I'm not sure about how many other times that has happened, like in the universe with all the other like Exo Mana War like orbs. But I'm assuming, you know, yes, as big as the world is, you know, others would die eventually, yes, from old age, even though they have like the suit on. Them. Yeah. So, and it's clear then that the orb itself is separate from the graftings it puts on it. Yeah. So would that mean that there's maybe even more of those like uh, Exo Man of War suits that are then like from the bodies of others while the other one has traveled? I don't, I don't know. It's just little things like that that opens up. Well, I mean, I mean, isn't that the whole? I mean, let's go. Let's look back to uh, to Malgum, right? Mm. It's let's use him as an example of what he. Um, like, like, like the normal thing that a suit does to, uh, to heal. what would you call it? No, 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 not to heal generally, but to a, to a host, mm. right? It overtakes it, right? It, it becomes it. So I'm assuming that it would probably be one of those things where it's just like, all right, the host is here. I have it. The host dies. I move on to the next one, leaving nothing behind, right? Mm. But I feel because Eric and um Shanhara has such a a different connection that this might be a special thing like a, like it's special that this suit that he became a suit which again it's very power rangers mm, oh but it could also then maybe be a like a dna thing as well 
Maybe. So maybe because you know specifically it's uh, you know grafting onto his daughter. So maybe that's the kind of thing that like it kind of Arik dies and then it maybe like goes to the closest similar thing. Mm. Well, that could make sense. But yeah, as I, I mean, the thing about the Power Ranger thing, I mean, it's it's the fact that she has a a tiger's mouth on her head. Yeah, but I, but that, that's something we've learned too. That you know, it does kind of personify itself a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, no, I like it. I'm not saying I, I don't like it. I yeah, love it's very Power Rangers. Pow- yeah, you know very this. Power Ranger. Yeah. Saber Tooth Tiger. It's morphin time. <laughs> uh, see, that's the thing. I wish there were more like you know Valiant fans everywhere, so you could have, have like Power Rangers jokes and stuff. But you know, nope. <laughs> well, funnily enough, if you go to Hyper RPG, they literally have one day of. Power Rangers role-playing game, and on the other night, they have Valiant role-playing game. Oh my gosh, you combined. With our powers combined, we make this Megazord. Man, remember how how surprised we were at how good that new Power Rangers movie was? Mm. Well, yes, as, a, as an aside on that, um, I, like, I've, like I said myself, I don't think it's a good Power Rangers film in terms of replicating the original like, you know, like actually being nostalgic and hitting the beats I would want. But as a film on its own, it was very good. Yeah, right. I love that film. So, like I said, terrible Power Rangers film, but a good, like, film. Well, no, it's a different Power What are you talking about? Why would you want to just remake the, the no, same old the movie? Point otherwise, like, I'd rather they did. Actually, this is something that I was discussing at work, too, with someone. Oh yeah, because I've been hearing that this new Jumanji film with the rock. Oh yeah, I've heard yeah, that that's yeah, supposed yeah. to be pretty good. Yeah, it is it's supposed to be really good. Yeah, mm. but the thing is, as I was hearing some, um, I was discussing with someone as well as hearing a YouTuber say it, it feels like that's the only compromise we can get from like the big Hollywood movies now. We can, if you want to have an original idea, you have to somehow brand it with something that exists. Mm. It did not have to be Jumanji. You know, like, it could have been its own thing. Because, you know, okay, people go into a video game and... Was it the Black Nerd comedy that you heard it from? No, no, it was someone else. I think George Michael Scott or something. Oh, okay. I can't remember his name. Okay. He's a fun guy. But that's the thing. You don't... You know, you don't need to make it into a Jumanji film. You know, so they have to f- uh, put in, like, the topics and stuff in there. Like, oh, yeah, you know, that that's a thing from the original movie. And it's just kind of sad that, like, no, that's what you have to do if you want to make a movie. You, you can't make mm. a movie about five teenagers with attitude. You know, like getting like powers and stuff. It has to be a Power Rangers movie. And like I said, it I just kind of feels with Power Rangers in particular because it has such a very specific feel. I mean, there's a reason that it was popular, not just because, you know, oh, it's teenagers. It's, it's specifically the style and look of it. Yeah. And that's what I feel then when someone wants to make a Hollywood version, like a big movie out of it. It just kind of feels, yeah, well, you got to kind of, you know, make some connections to the original then because there's a reason people like this. It's why I kind of hate when they take, like, very graphical, like, cartoons. Like, uh, Flintstones and, like, Yogi Bear and stuff. I mean, the design is what sold those, you know, characters for the most part. This very nice 2D character design. And then they make a movie out of it. It's like, you know what? Those beautiful designs and stuff, you know, I say live action actors. Like, live actors, you know, just have clothes on that kind of look like what they wore. You know that that's what people want to see. They, they, there wasn't there wasn't anything intrinsically appealing about the designs. No, no. But that's me as a, like an animator. You know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, literally, no one cares about that. <laughs> I know, uh, but still, no, well, I, I mean, I mean in, in all due respect, let's let's add that to that. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like like the Power Rangers movie. I mean, so many Power Rangers fans actually really liked it, and. I mean, maybe it's just this one example that I just, I just feel like the Power Rangers movie was just, it, it hit all the right beats for it to be a, a nice reboot. And um, I don't know. I mean, like what you're saying with the Flintstone stuff, I mean, yeah, maybe it started off as, as the designs were, were interesting, but also that's only, this, only something that you personally feel. I mean, I don't know if, it maybe the success just came from the fact that it was an animated sitcom, the first animated sitcom. Oh, I'm, I'm not trying to say it was only the designs, because you know then people would just look at stuff. But I feel it was an important part of it. Well, you don't. I mean, again, you're saying here. I feel you have no evidence to back <laughs> it. I mean, I'm just saying that you know, like. Oh, that's all I need, Chris. Feelings. 
Right, yeah. Um, yeah, it's no, just one of those things where I, f- I feel like you can... I mean, yeah, I'm not the happiest about the state of Hollywood right now. I mean, I've, you know, I haven't been watching any movies. I mean, the the best movies, my my favorite movies I have watched this year, well, last are year. Power, or yeah, last year, yeah, are Power Rangers and Baywatch. <laughs> and you got to that, that says something. I had the most fun watching a movie. When I was watching Baywatch alone at home, because I knew my girlfriend would not want to watch that movie because she was just like, oh, no, God, no. I watched that and I had the best time. It was such a corny, stupid movie. It hit all the beats that you expect that kind of movie to to do it. And it was glorious. It was so much fun. And and that's the problem. Like like I could watch. I didn't even watch like the 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 superhero movies because I just don't get time to go there, and I just don't feel like it. I don't I don't have that drive to go watch them. And and that's what I mean. Like like I feel like the movie industry generally is just like so uninteresting to me now. I mean, I'm so much more interested in watching all the TV shows and stuff. Like that. And that's something that Valiant should do. They should Valiant should make TV shows. That's where the money is. You get that fucking Netflix um money and you just kind of like get up with them and it's like hey netflix hey guess what i know that um disney is taking away all the uh the marvel stuff that you've you've made for them because they're doing their own streaming platform right now hey how about you and i make a little deal and we started a valiant universe on netflix uh, see we gotta knock off iron man here huh? knock off Batman. yeah huh? exactly yeah look at we got all this stuff you know and, and then we have a little bit of brand loyalty here huh nudge nudge <laughs> You know, a Netflix original uh, little comic book show, a comic book series, huh? You know, uh, Ninjak versus the uh, Valiant Universe. Yeah, yeah. Everyone knows who that is, right, right, right? Eventually, we will. At least, yeah. at least we'll have something more. You know, I think people will watch that. Just kind of like at least the first episode, like most things. It's gonna be like, okay, what is this? Well, it'll be interesting to see the ratings on that or view count, whatever you call it. All right. According to the update from my girlfriend, the game is is currently twenty eight twenty one, and we need to wrap this up so I can go watch the end of the uh, end of the game. <laughs> On the next episode of Sports Match. Of Sports Match. And I like saying that. Humphrey, Humphrey, Humphrey I will give you. Game. I will, Humphrey, I will give you ten ten euros if you can tell me the the TV show. The sports TV show that everyone watches in America. Oh, well, Super Bowl? No, no, no. Like the, the, the TV show, like not, not the not the game, but like the, the discussion thing, because you were all like sports sports day, sports thing. What's what's it called? I don't know. Like a like a scripted thing or No no no, like you know, like the discussion show where everyone like where they get together and they well, like the ESPN or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like what's what's the show on ESPN that they uh no idea. No idea. Uh, you, 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 you knew that, so that's, you know, that's a safe bet. <laughs> da da da. Da da da. What, Mark Sports Madness? Center. It's Sports Center. Sports Center, oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. That's the last little thing here, though. Um, let's go. All right. I, I didn't, I, did, I forgot that they were in Italy. Mm. So on page uh, seven there, when you see like the vine in disguise, yes, that's about, yes, before they enter through the security. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Um, they were speaking Italian, so I felt like, oh, he knows, he knows uh, her on a first name base basis, Gracie. Oh, dude, <laughs> I, was, yeah, I was kind of like, uh, I was a bit surprised, like, oh, that's interesting. I guess, well, it's even italicized, dude. So yeah, I'm still, he's kind of like, so, so like Gracie, like, you know, I guess that's important. You know, it felt kind of like a bad writing there. I felt, you know, like adding information that's not really necessary, mucking up the story. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, it was just enough because then I saw, I think it's on the next page. Yeah, because then in the next page, Emergenza, Emergenza. That made it clearer. But still, I asked, I asked to tell myself, Gracie, Gracie. <laughs> crazy, crazy. <laughs> uh, all right, then. But yeah, I mean, as a whole volume, of course, since these were all, you know, separate little stories with obviously continuity, but not in continuity. Hmm. Not really much to discuss. That that we we made all our discussions per issue. Yeah, yeah. But how did you feel with this then in comparison? Because the previous one, as you said, kind of it kind of like you know defeated its own purpose at the end. 
but these I believe are what's supposed to be canon like everything should lead up to these moments yeah so and uh, yeah I mean again it'll be a while I'm guessing so unless they want to have some time skips which would be kind of cool just to get things going but yeah you know you like the idea you know would it be cool like if uh, DC and Marvel did something similar <laughs> I don't think DC would have the ball. Do DC and Marvel would have the balls to do something similar? Mm. I don't think they would ever want to paint themselves into a corner like that, like purposefully paint themselves into a corner like that. Like an but then again, death also of Batman, even if they make it some weird thing where he lives for 150 yeah, but, years. But even then, dude, like the death of Batman, that's been done. Well, not properly like though. I mean, no, but yes, them. it has. No, like, like it's proper. The Dark Knight Returns. Yes, yes, but that's what I mean. It's like it's like. Death doesn't mean anything in Marvel and DC. It it doesn't. I mean, the only person who actually dies is 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 you know Ben Ben Parker and and what's her face? Gwen, no, no, Gwen Stacy. Well, Gwen, Gwen Stacy's kind of back though. Yeah, because of the alternate universe shit. But yeah, yeah you know what I mean. Like that's what I mean. It's like that's what I love about Valiant. It's just like they have balls. They're just like we're gonna we're gonna do one universe. So can I, and whatever can happens, Valiant put that quote on one of their books, Chris. Please, please. Valiant has balls, Christian Claus. <laughs> <laughs> Christian Claus, twenty eighteen. Um, no, but, but you know what I mean. Like they do, they they just they they say like, okay, we're gonna do one universe, and everything sticks. No repeats, no fuck ups. We're just it. This is it, and I love that because it's just it makes so much sense. And as a fan, you can just, I mean. You know, when you told me, hey, let's read every single volume of Valiant and discuss it, I was like, are you kidding me? Because I only knew Marvel and DC, and I'm just thinking, how are we going to get through thousands of books? We're never going to catch up. And then you're like, oh, no, no, it's just this many. I'm like, oh, okay, that's that works. There's no alternating timelines. There's no... Oh, but you know, in this universe, you know, this guy is like this and this and this and this. No, no, nothing like that. It's just one timeline, one story, and it's beautiful. And I love this. I mean, this should have been the book of death. All the stuff that happened in the last last volume that we read, I don't care. This is the real book of death. We mm. see some of the best characters, the most popular characters of Valiant die and how they die i mean yeah bloodshot's death was a little bit anticlimactic and i'm not happy with that but the other three perfect i mean with the peter stanchick thing i just wanted to see him die i don't care how he would die i would still be happy <laughs> but with this it's just beautiful i love it i love you valiant and uh yeah it's good stuff all right i, I don't think i can top that chris so you know if you'll sign us off <laughs> You can discuss this episode on Reddit, tweet us, or you can follow us on Facebook. Also, all of our episodes are available on our hosting site, Podbean. Links are in the show notes. Catch us next time for a very special episode. Book of Death, Legends of the Geomancer. The illegal copy. We'll discuss it when it comes. You know, it's, we will discuss it when it comes. It has a story. It's, 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 it's illegal.